Hello, I'm Stuart Paul. It's a very windy Devonshire day. Hopefully I'll be able to record okay though. And more importantly, pick up some fish along the way. I do spend a lot of time in Wales, and more so in uh, recent times. And you can't visit the Principality, can you? without bringing your rods and that's what I'm doing today. It's a flying visit to a favourite haunt of mine, Rill Harbour and I'm fishing the incoming tide and while I'm talking I'm getting baited up and that's my target for today. My target bait should I say. Uh, Logworm and I'm hoping to pick up a, a flatfish or two. Although if I'm honest, because it's just a, a very short visit that I'm making, I'll be happy with anything. Rockling, whiting, I'll tell you one thing that inevitably I will land and uh, they won't. Crabs! This is Crab City and I'm expecting plenty of action from those at least. Anyway, let's get the rods out and we'll see what the session has in store. That is what I came for. What a cracking flounder. That fish has now gone back to live and fight another day. The conditions aren't perfect. If I, if I were ticking boxes today, I would like a, a little bit more water coming in with the tide. It's not a particularly uh, big tide. I would like the wind direction perhaps in the other coming from the other way but as I say so many times if you watch my course fishing videos you'll uh, know that as long as you're baiting the water you've got a chance and that doesn't matter whether you're a course fisherman, uh, a game angler or you like to do a bit of sea. It doesn't matter as long as you're baiting the water you've got a chance and I'll just prove that haven't I? flounder gave me a cracking bite. If you were a coarse angler, never done any sea fishing before, came on holiday, got some gear, thought I'll give it a go, first thing you'll notice is how stiff the rods are. Five ounce leads, six ounce leads, 20 pound line, it's not something you're used to if you're a coarse fisherman. Anyway, you cast out, you tighten up, you sit back, wait for a bite, your tip starts to go, like there's no tomorrow, bouncing around, dancing around in the uh, air, you strike into it and you've got a two ounce white in. <laughs> That's the nature of sea fish, it's quite amazing really. The size of the fish and the bites that they give. I've done a number of videos here in Rill Arbor, well technically just a few yards downstream of the Arbor. I always talk about the trip down memory lane. My first sea fish here is actually on the other bank. I can take you to the spot right now. Even though it's all changed, it's been developed. I can take you to that spot right now where I caught my first sea fish back in the 1960s, a little flounder. And to pardon the pun, I've been hooked ever since. I love coming here, not necessarily because it's the best place around, it certainly isn't. Very rarely do I see any anglers here. I think the 
local Z4 different places. But for me, that trip down memory lane is important. I think the older you get, the more nostalgic you become. So to come and fish here, even if I catch nothing, even if I end up with a, a load of crabs, it's still a great experience to come back. But there used to be a pub on the far side, on the corner, there's nothing there now. It's a, a car park, I think, that isn't used very often, but it's a, it's a car park. And there used to be a pub called The Schooner, and my parents used to go in there, and I used to go up the road, down, before it was developed, down into the... Uh, the harbour at low tide with a coarse fishing rod I used to take on holiday, fishing with maggots of all things and I used to catch loads of flounders and eels as well and of course the obligatory crabs and my parents would uh, come out you know towards the end of the evening at different times in those days we wouldn't send your child across the road now to, to fish on his own but different times in those days my parents would come out and I would always be the last year everyone else had packed away, gone out I'd be there, even if it was getting dark, I'd position my rod in such a way looking up towards the street lights so I could see the rod too. We didn't have tip lights and head torches in those days. But uh, fantastic memories. And that would be this place again and again. A trip down down the lane. Memories are made of this. prolific the crabs are, I just reeled in after a couple of bits. Every single bait has been stripped off on this rod. I've got three hooks on this one, two on the other. So it's a case of having to avoid the crabs if possible and catch a flounder. one of the, the culprits, the bait strippers. You see, they don't have to be big. You don't actually catch them like you, you hook a fish. They hold on to the, to the bait. And even though they can let it go, they don't. And you bring them in, tiny, tiny little crab. Anyway, like the flounder, this one's going back. tide continues to creep in, I'm probably an hour or so off high water now, so I've decided to come up from the estuary onto the promenade, the concrete walkway, and I've got myself a nice comfortable seat. in the car of course. A short session, quite sweet as well, I really enjoyed catching that flounder. Pestered by crabs, I lost count of the number of crabs that I had on and also banked as well. Anyway, I really enjoyed it, that's what always counts in fishing isn't it? On to other things now, I hope you've enjoyed the video. You can check me out on Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I've got a few sea fishing sessions planned this year. And of course, lots of course fishing. That's where I'll be next week. Out and about yourself, tight lines. <laughs>